Hello, and welcome to Vivork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is the 12th in a 10-part video series. Yep, that's right, we're still going. This is another bonus episode, but in this episode, what we're gonna be taking a look at is something that you've probably seen multiple times in the previous videos, or maybe you've seen an orchestrator yourself, something called the Setup Wizard. As you can see, I'm logged into the VRO client, and I'm editing a workflow, and my workflow schema is calling somebody else's workflow. Their workflow is called Create Simple Virtual Machine. That's actually a workflow that we saw earlier, I believe it was in video number nine. But Cray's simple virtual machine, as you saw, had about roughly a, a dozen input parameters, an output parameter, and our job, if we want our workflow to call that workflow, is we need to do some variable binding. Well, I've shown you in previous videos two different ways of doing binding. One is to use the in and out tabs. So let's take a look at those real quickly here. Notice on the in tab here, we have the roughly dozen different input parameters, and it looks like I've set up one of the input parameters for VM name. Uh, over here on the out tab, I can see that there is an output parameter um, that I'd also need to hook up. Looks like I've already done that for this particular instance. And again, you can go back to the previous videos to see exactly the mechanics of using the in out tabs for doing that binding. I'll give you a hint. It has to do with this button here. Alternatively, another way of doing binding was to use the visual binding tab, which happens to be my favorite way of doing binding uh, for a variety of reasons. One, it's very visual. I'm a visual person. I can see what's going on here. I can see here's a binding, here's another binding. I can see which variables are bound together and so forth. Uh, plus I have useful information down here about uh, what each of these variables is. So for instance, if I select VM name, it tells me that VM name is a string and the description is virtual machine name. That's all handy. And I also love the fact that when it comes to calling somebody else's workflow, my job is to satisfy their contract. And that's what we see here in the middle. He'll create a simple virtual machine for us, provided we fulfill the contract. If we feed in all these input parameters and this output parameter, I won't have to create a workflow to create virtual machines. His workflow will do it for me. So in out tab, it's one way of doing parameter binding. Visual binding tab is another way of doing binding, but there's yet another way called the setup wizard. Now, I wanna show you the setup wizard, but I wanna show you the setup wizard from scratch. So I'm gonna close out of here, and I'm gonna close this window here too, and I'm gonna start off with a brand new workflow. So let's call this, let's see, new workflow. We're gonna call this my brand new workflow. Terribly original name. And I should go to the general tab to type a description. So here is my description. That's not a very good description, but you're typing descriptions, right? You better be. All right, um, let's go to the schema. In the schema, let's call that same create simple virtual machine. You know multiple ways of calling a workflow. I'm just gonna drag out this workflow caller here, schema element. And I'm gonna say I wanna call create simple virtual machine. There it is, I select it once, I double check is that the right one? Yep, that's it, so I double click. And again, I could use the in out tabs or the visual binding tab to do my binding, or I can use this thing called the setup wizard. If you wanna use the setup wizard, uh, use it right after you add in the schema element that needs the binding. If you wait till later, the setup wizard button that's up here may disappear. In fact, it will disappear at some point. So if you want to use setup bind, if you want to use the setup wizard to do your binding, do it right away. So I'm going to click on the setup button. And as you can see, a window has popped up here. Let me resize this a little bit so that we can perhaps see more of what's going on the screen. And I'll position it a little bit over here. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. I'm trying to be able to see this 
uh, workflow schema element in the background. So all of this information you see here in the setup wizard is describing things that are going on with this workflow that we're trying to call from our schema. Now, to begin with, the first thing to recognize in the setup wizard is that there's two major sections to it. There's the top section where we have information about the input parameters for this schema element, this workflow that we're calling. And then down in the bottom, we have information about the output parameters for this same workflow that we're calling. Now, the way things work down on the bottom for output parameters is essentially the same as the top. So let's just focus on the top. The first thing you'll see in the top section is these three buttons here, labeled input, skip, and value. For right now, completely ignore the skip column. Instead, uh, let's just focus on the input button and the value button. You'll notice when I click any of these three buttons up top that all of the corresponding buttons below change. So what does this top button do? The top button, what it does for me is it allows me to quickly change all these input parameters from being input parameters in my workflow to something else like an attribute. So if you choose input, that means these variables are gonna be input parameters. On the other hand, if you choose value, that's gonna turn the variable into an attribute. Now that's what I would have labeled these, these buttons. I wouldn't have labeled them value. I would have labeled them attribute. These turn your variable into an attribute. I guess the reason why they uh, labeled these value is if it's an attribute, which is what these buttons do, then you can set their value. On the other hand, input parameters, you can't, whoops, input parameters, you can't change their value. I just got a little ahead of myself. Maybe you just noticed. Uh, I can go through and individually select each of these, but before I select these different buttons, what I usually do first in the setup wizard is to ask myself, for all the inputs to this workflow that I'm calling, am I gonna make my variables for those be primarily attributes or input parameters? If I'm mostly gonna be working with input parameters, I'll click input and these are all now gonna say input. I can then just go to the individual ones that I want to be attributes and change them. Or alternatively, uh, as we're gonna see in this example here, I actually want my variables to be, at, for the most part, I want my variables to be attributes. So I'm gonna change them all to attributes and then just for the one or two that I want to be input parameters, I'll say input. So we have input parameter buttons, we have attribute buttons. If you set something to an attribute, you set its value over here. And we also have this column of buttons labeled skip. Uh, if I were able to change these labels, I would change them to null. Because what happens when you choose skip is you end up with a null binding to the variable, which is not something that we've talked about before and it's not typically something that you're gonna need to do. So I'm gonna punt on discussing the skip buttons for now. Just know that later on when you learn about null binding, the setup wizard allows you to quickly set up null bindings. Okay, uh, let's see here. So I'm gonna have one input parameter and the rest of them are going to be attributes. The section down below for output parameters works essentially the same way. Again, you've got the, the three buttons up top here. The labels have changed. Uh, obviously input's been changed to output. Skip still says skip and what said value up above now says local variable. But again, think of these buttons as uh, use, being used to indicate I want this variable to be an attribute. So as I have it right now, I'm going to have end up with one new input parameter in my workflow and a whole bunch of attributes in my workflow. These are all going to be new variables in my workflow. And I uh, challenge you, hit, hit pause here if you want to pop quiz yourself, but I challenge you to look on the in the setup wizard here to see if you can see how does this setup wizard indicate to you that all of these variables are going to be new variables. Again, hit pause, think about it, look around and figure it out. Okay, now that you're back, uh, the, the answer is real simple here. The plus sign that you see here on the left, to the left of each of these variables indicates that you're creating a new variable. Instead of creating a new variable, if you wanted to, 
if you already had a variable, whether it's an input parameter or an attribute, if you already have a variable and you just want to bind to the variable that you already have in your workflow, you click on the drop down menu triangle here. And what you'll see here, you don't in this case, but what you would see here is a list of all of your variables that could be uh, um, used with an inward binding. So again, uh, I can't illustrate that here because my workflow currently has no input parameters. But if I wanted to connect to my existing input parameter or attribute, I would choose it here. And if I did that, if I choose a new input parameter, excuse me, if I choose to bind to an existing input parameter or an attribute, then this plus sign will disappear for that variable. Another thing that you've uh, probably already figured out is this is not just a drop down list, but it's also a, a text field so that if you want to create a new variable, but you don't like this default name, maybe instead you want the variable to be called virtual machine name. Can't quite see that there. I may mistype that, but um, that's the right idea. If you want to, you can change the name here. These names are just the defaults that are based on the variable names of the workflow that you're calling. If you want to, you can change all these variable names. So you can bind to a new variable that has the same name as his variable name. You can bind to a new variable that has a variable of name of your choosing, or you can bind to an existing variable. And again, that works for input parameters, output parameters, attributes, works for them all. All right, so I'm going to, uh, you can choose to um, skip through this part if you want, um, but I'm going to actually go through the process of setting up all these attributes. I'll show you one real quickly here. Uh, for instance, let's see here, disk thin provisioning is a, is do we want our disk to be thin provisioned? If you click on input value, you get some radio buttons. Do you want a thin provision disk? You say yes. That's the same question I would have been asked if I had done the binding with visual binding or the in out tabs. Uh, other things that are simple to set up. Uh, disk size. Let's see. Disk size. I want it to be an attribute and I'm going to set the value to the number of gigabytes, which is, let's make it a hundred gigabyte disk. So again, you just go through all of these input parameters, clicking on them or attributes or output parameters. You just click on actually only attributes. For all these attributes, you can set their value as you see fit, much like you do when you use the visual binding tab or the in out tabs. Now, I would ordinarily go through all these, but I want to show you real quickly here. One last thing here, the promote button. Uh, if I could change that label, I'd just change it to OK. It's the OK button. You click the OK button and it'll commit whatever changes you made. And notice that I now have uh, all my bindings set up. So I've got my output parameter bound. I've got um, his input set up, one of them as an input parameter, the rest as attributes. Now I still need to go set all the attribute values, uh, just like if you didn't set the values on the in out tabs or the visual binding tab. If you haven't set the value of your attributes, you'll just go to the general tab and set them up the way you normally would. So I'm gonna to go to the general tab. I'm gonna to go to the general tab. Uh, in the general tab, if I collapse the top section, here's all my attributes. Uh, if I didn't set their values in the setup wizard, now's the time to do it and you know how to set these all up. Uh, so I said a few moments ago, I was going to step through all these. You, you've already seen me set these up. If you don't know uh, how to set these values, go back to video number nine. Um, I stepped through all these, but I think we've shown you what I came to show you, which is how to use the setup wizard. Again, one last thing about the setup wizard. The setup wizard is of the three techniques, the in out tab, the visual binding tab, and the setup wizard. The setup wizard is by far the most advanced. It allows you to very quickly set up your bindings if you know what you're doing. On the other hand, if you don't know what you're doing with the, the uh, setup wizard, you can very quickly totally trash your bindings, which is not uh, irrecoverable, but you'll have a lot of work to, to clean up any bindings you messed up with the setup wizard. So my recommendation is start out with the in-out tab, then progress to the visual binding tab. And when you feel like you've really got those mastered, then go start using the, the setup wizard. So you got to understand parameter binding uh, inside and out to use the setup wizard, in my opinion. So that's my opinion. If, if you're not ready to use the setup wizard, there's no shame in that. Go ahead and use the other two approaches and get them under your belt, master them.
and then use the setup wizard. So that's it for this video, but we have lots of other videos at vvork.info and um, on YouTube. So take a look at the other videos. If you have any questions, comments, please feel free to drop them down into the comment window and I'll see you in the next video.